Kanda. Uh, let's get started. Uh, thanks everyone for joining today. So today we are going to discuss about like, the bundle classes in uh, Drupal actually. So although it was introduced it's still somewhere like nine point three or so, but it's been like, mainstream for now. Like people are extensively using it. So um, I'm Mohit and I'm a Drupal developer on Kubernetes next. That's my Drupal identity. So you can reach out to me. Uh, mainly today, uh, what we'll be seeing is like you know the basic introduction to one class, how we can actually use it like on you know day to day development side, and uh, how we can you know get more benefit from theme and you know other aspects of like day to day development. So I uh, will straight away uh, jump into it. Uh, this is the uh, marketing stuff. So. Uh, Maybe like, what are the bundle classes? So can I know like, uh, any of you, or who, who is on like Drupal 9.3 class? Almost everyone? Or, yeah, you should be because like it is out of support now. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so cool. So many uh, bundle classes are kind of, we can say, uh, business object. Uh, typically, it contains all the business logic related to a particular um, entity, I would say. So, now let's take one example. So, we have our uh, node type, right? So, what it does is like node can have multiple bundles, like multiple bundle or basic page bundle or whatever, right? Now, what usually happens is uh, there are some business logic that are particularly tied to that content type. So, we can basically, you know, define or we can implement those logic. Uh, relevant bundle classes, and you can have like you know, decent uh, abstract code actually, uh, rather than you know, like putting up everything into the part of or services and also things. So, this is uh, kind of brief about uh, bundle class. So, another benefit is that uh, you know, we can, like, let's say we have a bundle class for all the node bundles. Now what happens like we can actually uh, use it across multiple projects as well. Suppose we have uh, some sort of generic repository of uh, all the components that we use right here. So we can actually share it across multiple projects and we can uh, reuse it if we need. We can build a usable bundle or whatever that we can import anywhere. So these are the kind of you know, uh, advantages of bundle class. Uh, now we'll see like how to define bundle class. So the main uh, theme is that so the main theme is that uh, what we need to do is uh, we just need to implement like two entity for so what it does is like it just iterates through all the bundles that we have in the system like all the entities and then eventually all the bundles and just overrides the class that would be here. So here it is you had uh, kind of Defining the bundle classes over here for all the uh, entities and bundles. So, this is like more entity, and then we have like article content type or page content. Similarly, for media, I have like image, uh, media type and all. Uh, so, eventually, what the class is like, I type this image, and if any of the uh, bundle that I get, uh, it's just replacing with this particular class. In Drupal, we take care of you know, the quality and doing all sort of processing things. Uh, so this is about you know, defining the bundle class. There is another way as well. Like you mentioned, like uh, so typically now in Drupal 8 or Drupal 9 onwards, we have like we more emphasis on object-oriented architecture. Or kind of we are starting slowly getting rid of uh, module file, but module file is not kind of required in more right? So there is another way as well. Like we can get rid of a module file. So there is a bundle of uh, module code. We see it, uh, bundle uh, uh, annotations actually. So, bundle class annotations actually. So, what it does is uh, it provides a plugin. Uh, So basically what it does is that like it provides a plugin actually. Uh, we can implement uh, all the bundle plugins in the class, uh, in the module and 
is equal to the exam. For example, here you can see right, that here we have our bundle plugin or connected to the media and bundle is video. Right? Uh, right? So, module ultimately does the same thing. Right? Module Excel does the module plug, uh, kind of it's, it's a plugin, right? Bundle is a plugin. So, it will activate through all the plugins and ultimately just pass the changes to you know, the same who gets it. So the main benefit of this is, is that you can know, get rid of module file altogether uh, because it's not kind of you know um, necessary to uh, So that's kind of another way or uh, uh, way to you know, define the new classes. Uh, kind of between uh, over here if you see like uh, here we have like multiple classes. So you can see over here. Uh, this is the standard group that we saw earlier. Similarly, if you have carried out, you can design the bundle class over here. Later, eventually, uh, you can just you know, create a uh, proper name specific for different entities so that you know, it's well organized. You can just easily figure it out. Uh, that's one way. And eventually, you can just implement it over here. We'll go through all this detail uh, in the next video. So, it's a kind of you know, in the basic idea. So, this is uh, brief about like, how do we declare the classes. Now, uh, next is uh, how we can effectively use them. So, we'll see, like, usually we'll see a couple of methods or a couple of approaches that we can use in the bundle class. So, the first one is like, uh, let's take one example. Uh, we are having one paragraph. Right? And uh, we want to mark certain paragraph as a featured paragraph, which should have some sort of Different style altogether, like highlighted in you know, red or gold or whatever. So, so what it does is like we create a you know checkbox uh, in the paragraph which will mark paragraph as a featured paragraph. So typical approach of right now, what we usually do is like we write the template create process hook, check the value of the paragraph in the field, and like set a new big process or new variable in the uh, template process hook, and eventually we edit it from here. And do like all sort of logic over here. Now, with the bundle classes, we can actually uh, propagate it. Well, I would say rather than writing about the uh, template query process thing, we can just put this uh, logic in the bundle class itself. So, here, uh, yeah, so this is the kind of uh, feature. Uh, this is how we can actually open the class, and this is the simple method in the uh, Class. Again, uh, one thing we should be sure that like, whenever we create a bundle class, it should extend the base entry class. So, since this is a paragraph, we are extending a paragraph from base class. In case of node, it can be a node base class, which is like node.php. Uh, here, simply we just, you know, we just check it over here to identify whether like, it is featured or not. Uh, one thing uh, we should you know, you should be careful over here is that uh, if you notice the prefix, right? Again, okay, this is the uh, specific prefix that are allowed actually over here. So if you see, right, uh, in Drupal, we have a like green sandbox policy basically. So it, it just allows certain uh, method with like certain prefixes only. For example, it can have get, as, or means. So by default, only this three uh, prefix methods are allowed. Now let's say if you want to have a kind of another method for like okay, uh, accepting admissions or accepting PSP students or something like that. So what it does is like making over uh, this configuration of allowed variable using this particular variable, uh, make sandbox allowed for that. So you can just define the variable in the of PHP and you can override this things. So that, you know, it can allow more number of methods. But we should be mindful, right? When you do that, because like if the list grows longer, it's a bit so PHP kind of becomes a maintenance nightmare, right? So ensure sure that the uh, list is kind of well thought and we would be allowed you know, certain methods on the otherwise it may end up in being a security uh, uh, issue as well. So this is the kind of thing uh if you show you actually. So here uh, if you see that right, uh, we have this uh, simple level class uh, method over here. And uh, I have a so 
it seems to me like uh, if you like if you see the kind of uh, course theme, uh, you will see like we have this full paragraph entity available over here. So you can just you know um, you can see over here like it has all this thing as well. So you can directly call it. And eventually what I'm doing over here is like so just directly calling this method. That's pretty much it. So this is about like how we can actually implement it. Uh, another use case uh, which is like related to theming that I'm going to target. Uh, so I have been like I have been extensively using it. So uh, the thing is that like if you see uh, node uh, modules like template preprocessor, uh, we have this thing. Like if you see the template preprocessor, we have similar thing like over here where uh, you can actually generate render array of that particular uh, values, like for example, something like this, we are generating of the name, and uh, yeah, we will render array and then return it. Eventually, this render that uh, render array and uh, the plot that is given to me. Now, uh, since we can actually you know, replace this with like a generic method, uh, we can actually leverage it in you know, a bundle class over here. So, this is how we can do it in bundle class. So let me uh, switch to uh, so here. Uh, yeah. So here, if you see the method, right, I'm directly pulling the uh, name, whatever. Eventually, I get the value and I just write it. So uh, let's see the template over here, uh, kind of overriding template. Uh, so eventually, you can directly pull the method from here. So we don't need to declare any variables in the template process of or any other additional things. The benefit of this that the benefit of this is that you can actually you know share it across multiple classes. For example, I have created a base class. Now in case if you want to like, have a different uh, uh, naming format for article, you can simply uh, overwrite this method right, in the article class and you will know, start taking that. So I think mean, the kind of flexibility that you use is kind of you know, immense. Also, like if you do like the template approach, you have to change it to theme or every other basically. This is kind of independent of theme. So, whatever theme you allow, right, or whatever theme you enable, uh, it will get applicable anywhere since it is side to modules. So, that's the kind of another uh, flexibility uh, the bundle class provides. Uh, next one is uh, about like sometimes let's say we want to do, uh, prepare additional template variables. Uh, it is all here, right? Uh, for example, uh, sometimes uh, you are uh, working with style guys, uh, style guide based developments, right? Where uh, let's say front end developer has prepared all the components in the style guide. So, what you usually need to do is you just need to prepare appropriate variable. Include the style guide to make fun, and that's pretty much it, right? So, these kind of scenarios where, you know, can be like really helpful where you know, we can prepare template variables. So, uh, since like we, what, what we are usually uh, doing here is like if you see, right, uh, we, we have a pre process, but what we usually do is like we can just implement uh, one user case actually. Uh, again, I mean, this is not. Like really needed to implement the class. Why uh, I have done is that like, all the bundle classes uh, that allow subjects one template variable to be modified, just to simplify that, I have created an interface. So, uh, let me show you. Uh, so, over here, uh, you can I have just created one interface. So, what it does is like, it defines a method uh, called like, get template variables. And eventually, you know, like whatever bundle uh, classes we want, uh, we can just implement that particular method. So, what we usually need to do is we have to implement that particular interface and override the variable over here. Later, what it does is like, we can write a standard you know, template process model and call the method from here itself. Uh, I think the benefit of this that uh, benefit of this one is that uh, we don't need to do uh, for example if you want to do the same thing over here, you need to like get multiple conditions. Like if content type is article, prepare with template variable, similarly if content type is like a recipe, 
you need to only prepare its standard variable, the, the matrix itself becomes really huge, right? Instead of these, you can just, you know, if, if you want like the recipe uh, to have a custom template variable, your bundle class for recipe, it can implement the simple test. And eventually call the method and get template variable. And you will have like all sort of template variables. And, and you can just, you know, pass it to the style like point five. That way it becomes like really easier and you can, you know, parallelly do the work with like front end. So that's kind of uh, another, uh, uh, you know, uh, instance as well. So next one is uh, like, you might have some like, uh, in Drupal, uh, for example, if you see uh, use cases where, you know, for example, we saw a uh, use case for get both of them, right? Similarly, in Drupal, uh, when we share a field across multiple containers, let's say our get field, right? or uh, XYZ field is shared across multiple containers, and we want to kind of fetch values all the time, right? So, what we can do is uh, we can put a <coughs> we can put a generic thread or a you know abstract class and ultimately you know we can actually reuse all those things. So for example, let's take one example, right? Uh, we want to build the markup or we want to build the render array for featured image, right? So uh, imagine like uh, for all the content that we are using the same field profile media. Right? So what we usually do is like when we, let's say when we render a particular in block, you can directly call the field or build feature to get it You will have like whole markup of this. So let me kind of So let's say uh, on the landing page, right? Uh, like on the landing page, we are just we want to kind of build a header for the landing page, right? Uh, and eventually you can you know, call this method in here or even you can call this method from the block as well. Like for example, this is the same for header block, right? So what it usually do is like uh, if the block uh, or if the current page is like landing page, right? Uh, we can just if it is not a learning page, we can skip it. Otherwise, like we can call the build header vendor and we will render this block, we particularly render the header of that particular learning page. And eventually, we can put this block in layout builder as well. So, what will happen over here is like we can see the method. Okay. Uh, here, again, like we are, what we are calling is again the expected method. So, if you go to the method over here, right? All, this, uh, all it does is like it, it is getting the values from the field, uh, render the value. So here we, we can optimize it like in multiple ways. Like for example, we can make this method a generic enough. Uh, it can make like you know uh, image style as well, so that like when we go to the media render actually, uh, you can pass the particular view mode or anything. Like, you know, eventually, like uh, even we are just calling like the view builder itself. So we are not kind of compromising anything that is given in Google. Like for example, you can uh, basically render it in particular view mode as well. So that's how flexible it is. And uh, all, it, all it means is like whenever you know, whenever you want to render a kind of feature in this program, you can all you need to call is mail render. Whenever you know, whenever you want to display this call the mail render and you will have like Whole render array for that data. So uh, that's the kind of you know another uh, flexible way we can actually use it. Uh, besides, like if you see right, I have put like multiple methods over here actually. Uh, again, it's an abstract class, so it's the more things. Uh, so this is the kind of new feature image. So even other content types can use it if needed. Similarly, uh, Again, the generic method which allows us to get the content level. So, all these things are something you know, we frequently use it everywhere, like in custom modules or on the theme or in you know, the you can just optimize, optimize it so that everything is at like one place. It, it helps to you know, uh, debug things easily. Uh, so, this is about like you know, uh, how we can actually reuse the SA classes. Uh, Another thing that we saw about generic methods, right? Uh, that can be like multiple things. Uh, let's say I want to fetch a certain field, like for example, my taxonomy that is shared across multiple uh, content. I can just you know, straight away call the method, fetch render. 
Similarly, you can you know get the get the image of print uh, image render and you can just put it on we can you can render everything. Uh, another thing is like uh, you know uh, let's say we have multiple paragraphs and we want to fetch certain paragraph and promote it. You can do that. You can kind of traverse through all the values, figure out the relevant value and, and promote it. So these are the kind of you know uh, multiple use cases that actually we can use. I mean it, it's we have the tool, it's it's up to us like how creatively we can use it actually. Uh, next one is kind of uh, right. So uh, this is kind of another uh, uh, approach that we can take. Like usually uh, what Great does is like it allows us to you know extensively reuse the uh, methods or like, libraries or whatever we implement. Right? So uh, what we can do is like we can build a company-wide generic script collection and we can use across all the projects. So what will happen is like it allows us to uh, it gives us flexibility to we use anything like across the company. And the thing is that like, if it is like shared across the like, entire organization, uh, what we can do is like, we can properly manage it, we can like, make the project transmit it. It is kind of you know easy to manage all uh, all like the release management for trades. So this is kind of another use case uh, I will show the more of trades actually. Okay. So what I have done I have built a simple free process at uh, for example, now if you want to check it, like if this content type has pizza field, you can straight away call it like has pizza. But eventually, you can uh, get that trade over here. And, uh, yeah. You can actually input the trade on you know, any kind of class. So, that's about uh, you know, using trades actually. Uh, next one is. Uh, there are like multiple uh, you know, free will uh, free tools that you can actually use. Uh, another note is like, you know, um, makes our uh, testing easier. So now let's say uh, we have a new space, right? uh, we have a coding of the article, and we want to identify like article type for that uh, particular uh, node. For example, if the you know, word count is less than 3, can be a summary, uh, it will be in there, it can be a short uh, and do it in this end, I do it as research. So this is again a typical example to kind of understand how we can actually use it in um, um, in uh, kernel test or functional test. So this is the kind of simple implementation that we have. Now we want to test it actually. So this is the kind of simple test case that we have. Uh, what we can do is to get a node, hold the direct of directly. Just very very like what okay, is the you know uh, the just a number of one uh, way that the uh, time to be kind of upgrade all the characters over here. Uh, so common in this creation. But this is how actually you can use it in test case. Now the uh, benefit of uh, this is that like uh, in addition, like if we have this method with a template reprocess variable, uh, you could have brought like whole functional test case for that. Here is you can just get things done using a kernel base, which is like somewhat faster than functional one. So uh, these are kind of you know other flexibility uh, that we have uh, over here. Uh, so that's that's pretty much it. I mean now uh, that's uh, you kind of show you over here. So this is the kind of my uh, sample setup that, that I have. So here initially kind of for a quick thing I have a function test, but this is now uh, uh, you can uh, for this typing tests. I'm using my test right, actually, which is a kind of really easy method to write a test. So it's like as simple as that. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, any questions? Uh, any questions that you have uh, from the requirement perspective, like how we can use it for any other things? And we'll upload this report on GitHub so you can, um, anyway, you can refer that. So, later as well. Good. How easy it is to override this? Uh, you can simply uh, extend it, like, for example, uh, I mean, if you want to kind of another class, like, 
uh, they just like do something like, uh, for example, research article, explains article. Even if you want to prevent it, like, okay, I don't want to make this article as extensive, you can make it final, so no one will be able to work it. It's supposed now like the control is with like classes and interfaces that we can just do leverage like whatever we want, the way we want. Mentioned one module BEC. BEC, yeah, under classes and uh, so what exactly that does? Uh, so it allows us to kind of, uh, you know, so it's a module uh, that allows us to define multi So what it does is like uh, this module provides a plugin for bundle. Uh, so what we do is like we just implement the plugin. And uh, it allows us to, uh, so for example, when we implement that plugin, uh, we just don't need this group all together actually. For example, so what this plugin does, like the module does, is the module implements the same group. Uh, eventually, if you like it, so all the plugin and pass these values to this same group. You don't need the one. Yeah, so when we use that particular module, we can just implement the bundle plugin, and that's pretty much it. You can get rid of this whole file module. It's up to us actually. So for you know, uh, so that we can find it easily uh, and for, for like kind of standard structure. So just putting it over here. So this is again the SRC folder, and then I'm kind of categorizing in uh, NTD and just no. I mean, this is something it's up to us how we want to categorize it. Uh, it's like I'm just you know keeping it simple. And ultimately, what it does is like it will kind of you know, find the class over here. That's pretty much it. For example, if you see here, we are actually referring the article class. So, I mean, formatting anything with this one is you need to correct namespace. Yeah, if you see the namespace over here, right? This is like, you know, in the mode. So, over here, like we are in the mode, and the layer is added. So, it's up to us, like, which namespace to use. And we can use it throughout the project. Yeah, we can use it in Yeah, we can even use it in theme as well. Yeah, so here if you see, right, uh, again, I mean, uh, I'm not actually using it, but we can directly use it as well. For example, uh, this is just like this, but I can directly go there, like, right? not as instance of article. You can see over here, right? In the suggestions. You can directly use it. This is included in core in V9. Sorry? Is this included in core? Yeah, it is in core. It is in core since uh, yeah, 9.3 years ago. It's been there since quite some time. Cool. Any questions? So, and you can always like, reach out to me. Like, I will upload the slide as well as this repository uh, so you can try to get that. Awesome, thanks. Thanks for joining.